You're listening to the Thomas Talks Podcast. Welcome to Thomas Talks Podcast, where we talk about anything and everything school buses. I'm your host, Tom Zelke from Daimler Trucks North America, and joining me today is Kaylee Edgerly, President and CEO of Thomas Built Buses, and Mark Childers, Powertrain and Technology Sales Manager at Thomas Built Buses. On today's podcast, we'll be talking about Julie, Thomas Built Buses Type C Electric School Bus. We'll learn about some of the key features of Julie and really what sets this bus apart. So let's dive in. We've been hearing a lot about Thomas Built Bus's new electric school bus, the Safety Liner C2 Julie. Can you tell me more about where you are in the development of this new electric bus? And is Julie out on the roads yet? Yeah, Tom, it, uh, let me give you a kind of an update on where the, the Julie is. We are seeing uh, product in our customers' hands today. We deliver, we delivered in 2020 product to our customers, and we are um, today seeing that product um, on the road in multiple markets, everywhere from Alaska to um, Massachusetts to Illinois to Oklahoma. Indiana. And so we're very excited to see our customers uh, utilizing Julie in a number of different types of, of applications. So we have some customers who have um, deployed Julie on routes, transporting students already. Unfortunately, you know, with uh, in the last year in 2019, when we shipped those products, they were under the cloud of COVID in many cases. And some of those vehicles have not been deployed, but some have. And either whether they're transporting students or, in some cases, they're actually using the electric school bus to, to deliver food to uh, areas uh, through the school systems. So the product is out there. We're excited to see our customers uh, take the product, put it on the road, whether they're using student, delivering, you know, transporting students or they're delivering um, meals to, to, to students in in their homes out in the in the areas. Our production is ramping up uh, here at Thomas for 2021. We're very excited about what our future looks like in 2021 with the excitement of uh, customers looking and talking around EVs with our dealers and with us. Um, there have been a number of, of programs around the country uh, in terms of some funding programs that have opportunities for our school districts to uh, really seriously look at uh, deploying school buses and, and how to support that. So with that, we see 2021 shaping that to be a very positive year for Julie production. And as we move into the, to the year, um, you know, we'll continue to see our customers uh, come to us and ask those types of questions around where are we in production and those types of things. So um, very excited about 2021 uh, with, with Julie this year. If I look back at 2020, Mark, uh, it's a, it was a tough year just because of the pandemic and, and school buses not running to the full extent. But Julie and our Julie program brought us a lot of joy here at Thomas Built Buses starts with testing and, and we had all sorts of test vehicles on the road and as you know you test to fail and so we found failures and we fixed those failures so we're not passing them on to our customers and at the same time we were testing we we're ramping up production going from making a prototype vehicle to to seeing them go to the both the chassis and the body going down the regular assembly line so it was it was fun to see that come together and then we didn't do a whole lot of traveling as a company, as you know, in, in 2020 because of the pandemic. But one guy that got to a little bit was Mark here. And to see him go when vehicles were finished and do that handoff with customers and, and see the joy behind all that work that led up to it was was a lot of fun to, to see and hear about. Uh, Mark, I hope you spent our travel dollars wisely. <laughs> yeah, I did, Kaylee, and that's a great, I mean, it really is. Personally, for me, it was just really an honor to, and very humble to be able to represent uh, Thomas, our, our thousands of our thousand employees plus here at Thomas, the hard work that they've done, the hard work that our team at Freightliner Custom Chassis has worked on, our team at Proterra, 
um, it's certainly a huge project that involved a lot of people. And to be able to be there, I wish everybody could be there to, to see a customer take their first delivery of a Julie product. It, it, it warms your heart. It makes you feel really good. It makes you feel like, wow, we really have delivered a product to a customer that, that number one, you know, they are taking great pride in and excitement for, and we're proud of what it can do for the community and, and for those students who are going to ride. Um, I also want to remember one thing, Kayla, as you were talking, it, it prompted me that in 2021, not only did we you know, deliver our products to our customers, but we had this really fantastic opportunity in the state of North Carolina to, uh, to put our name in the hat for the coolest thing made in North Carolina. And it was the first year, it's the inaugural year that, uh, that companies could nominate uh, their products in the state. And it was a voter kind of a crowd voting opportunity to, you know, to see what was the coolest thing in North Carolina. And so we submitted that. Uh, it was submitted by one of our employees. And, um, and so we were very, very honored and humbled and proud to, to say that with stiff competition from people like um, Caterpillar and Honda Jet and George's, George's bar barbecue, barbecue sauce. sauce and some other things, Texas Pete, the, those type of things here in North Carolina, um, we were very honored and humbled to be selected as the coolest thing and made in North Carolina for 2020. And uh, we kind of carry that a little bit on our badge as well. So it was a fun year, despite some of the, you know, the, the cloud that was around it with, uh, with everything that was going on in 2020. Can you talk a little bit about why developing this electric school bus has taken a little bit longer? Well, in, in my heart, I don't think it's a little bit longer. I think it's the right amount of time because the tremendous responsibility we have of the riders of our school bus. We're transporting kids, so we're not just going to turn a prototype around and, and go to production. We have to provide the very best for our customers. We had a very stringent and long test plan so that we could deliver reliability and safety. And maybe as Frank Sinatra would say, we did it our way. And that is the safe way, and it's full of testing, it's full of failures, and we find those failures, we go back and fix them. But we have darling children riding in our school bus, so we weren't going to turn a product to, to market without thorough testing, learning, understanding, fixing issues, going through safety tests. It had to be the best. So we completed that, and now we're in market. And, and Kaylee, I, I would add to that in terms of maybe some other factors that we added or as we went through this process, we, we learned a lot about our product in terms of thinking not around how our technicians, it's new technology for a technician in the dealership, a new technology for a technician at, at the school district. And so I think we spent a lot of time kind of asking ourselves, you know, how will our customers interact with this new product. So um, so we spent, a, there was a spent a lot of time looking at the design of the product. You know, everything from routing of high voltage cables to coolant lines to, um, you know, how will a customer service this product uh, in terms of how will they maintain it moving forward? And, and you know, I can think of a few things that we we started down one path and then we said, OK, well, that's really probably not the most serviceable location or design setup. And we asked, you know, our guys, our team to go back and say, could we do it a little bit differently? Just to kind of think about our our customer in terms of 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 the technician who's going to interact with this product, because, you know, that's an important piece, you know, especially when these products and our school buses are going to be you know, out there for 15, 20 years. And, and so I think we also took time in the development cycle and the process and all of those conversations to think about, you know, that aspect of this product and how it will it impact other areas of our customers that uh, are going to move or interact with our Julie product. So I think that was one of the other things too. We, we spent time in that. Yeah, one, one of our partners, Tom, is a dear partner 
uh, that we invest in is Proterra, providing the, the powertrain and the, and the battery packs. And we're able to learn from them. I think they're able to learn from us during the development too. They're operating city buses, they have been for years. And we took a lot of learnings from their development cycles, as well as, as some of the, let's say, road bumps that they hit as they rolled out the transit bus, their transit bus, the Proterra transit bus, and learned from that and put those learnings into our development cycle and we executed it. Uh, so they brought in valuable experience that was part of the development cycle as well and uh, trusted partners through it all. Kaylee, can you tell me a little more about Proterra? Why Proterra compared to some of the other suppliers that you could have partnered with? Real simple one analogy I'll give you. Proterra is like a cook, a fine chef that eats their own meal, right? Because we're, we're getting our battery packs from them. That's, that's the food that's being placed on the table. That's really the, the driving technology, the battery management system, the powertrain, the batteries themselves, how they're packed. And Proterra is a, a valuable partner because they have them in their city transit buses and, and they run them and they run them successfully. They bring experience and a high degree of safety so much that the same packs go in their own vehicle that they, own, they put their brand name on, just like we're having to put our Thomas built buses brand name on our vehicle with their packs. We're also very proud to hang where we can in state specifications, Proterra's banner brand on our bus as well, because they're a great partner that has experience. I want to hear more about Julie. Can you tell me about what Julie offers to districts and maybe what makes this bus different from other electric buses on the road? Let's talk about range, power, safety, and reliability. Yeah. So, Tom, I'll, I'll take that and we'll just jump into to, to our Julie product. And a great question, like what, what's different about the Julie? And, and we'll talk about those differences when it relates to the electric. But I think one of the foundations of our product is the fact that we have we started out with our, our C2 uh, that our customers are very familiar with today. Uh, the reliability, uh, the, the features, the safety aspects, components of the safety aligner C2 is the foundation of our Julie product. So if I kind of think of it in terms of, you know, the chassis level up has really not changed that much uh, that our customers are used to. The body side of it, very sim similar products and components and, you know, wouldn't be unfamiliar territory for any of our existing customers. And very easily for any new customers to get accustomed to. Where all of those changes came around in terms of how we distinguish our product really comes in, as Kaylee said, our partnership with Proterra and those foundational uh, components on the chassis. So let's talk about, I think one of the talks, you know, one of the points was around range. So let's talk about that. As Kaylee mentioned, we, we have integrated the Proterra powertrain system, which they have in their uh, transit products that has been proven over 10 million miles already in the transit market. And we brought that into the Julie. We are using a 226 kilowatt battery pack, which that capacity gives us the largest standard uh, capacity in the school bus industry. Um, and you kind of equate that range to um, the, the range or the battery pack kind of equates to a gas tank or a fuel tank on a vehicle uh, in terms of how far can you go with, with the vehicle. So with having 226 kilowatts of total capacity, it gives us a very large range in terms of meeting our customers' expectations. Um, so we're able to travel in that 134, up to 134 mile range on routes that are typical of the school bus market say anywhere between it can range from say 35 to 75 miles on a particular route and so our product given uh, that capacity can can attain those types of uh, ranges for it um, you know we've we've done a lots of other things we we're using uh, Proteria's expertise in terms of uh, a transmission that's in there to help us with efficiency on the product that's another Proterra uh, learning that we've learned with Proterra and they've brought into this project for us to use 
uh, and to gain efficiency so we can reach those higher mileages. The other, the other piece around this is, is Proterra's um, battery management system. That's another component. So some distinguishing marks about that is that, you know, Proterra brings to us a very complete package in the powertrain. So with our partnership with Proterra, we have a, a partner who is manufacturing the batteries, putting those battery packs together. They've brought together the integration with other powertrain components uh, in terms of the battery management system uh, and how that operates. And then, you know, we'll talk a little bit, maybe a little bit later around charging. So Proterra brings to the table their own charging expertise. And then the final kind of cap to me is, is the telematics. So if you look at what we offer in our product with Proterra, we bring everything from battery manufacturing through product integration, through product management, all the way through charging and into the telematics suite. So we really bring a, an end-to-end -end type of solution in our product using Proterra uh, combined with our Julie uh, itself. Um, you know, the other question you talked about was, was power. You know, so we look at all of those components around power. Um, so we have the Proterra powertrain, which is coupled with a, a UQM motor. It's a little more technical there, but we're bringing that type of power. We have 295 horsepower peak power on the vehicle. So our product has really uh, gone through a lot of um, design to make sure that we align our technical components to what our customers will expect in terms of power and then the other question I think you asked around is reliability. So the reliability side of it, I think we, we really were selective in our partnership selection with Proterra to dive into their reliability that they already have in the transit market. So our selection of Proterra really was, was part of that. Part of that selection process was understanding reliability that they have in the transit market performance that they have in the transit market, making sure that that product um, was going to really meet kind of what we had a vision for in our school bus market. And, you know, we are very um, confident in terms of how the product's going to perform based on, you know, Proterra's performance in the transit market. Um, and maybe I think one of the last points was maybe around safety. So, Safety around our product is paramount for, for Thomas and for Daimler itself, uh, as well as Proterra. And so our selection, again, was around those kind of pillars of a selection process of Proterra, safety, reliability, those kind of components within that, in that decision process. And for us, you know, we're doing the safety testing on our Julie today that, um, we, we've in, integrated uh, lots of new safety in terms of uh, side impacts for batteries. Uh, we've introduced uh, a whole suite of um, reliability and test buses that we're actually injecting kind of faults into the vehicles to, to make sure that we understand how they perform. And that's part of our overall safety um, you know, strategy here at Thomas is to make sure that what we put out in the Julie product um, meets our rigorous safety standards uh, from Thomas as well as Daimler. Um, Kaylee, anything to add around safety? You want I, I'm just proud that we stuck with our test plan. It wasn't to uh, build a prototype or two and then move into production, change our assembly line so we could build it, but that was uh, far more than a handful of test vehicles put on the road, put on test tracks from a safety standpoint and from a reliability and we hit our targets and we just continue to run them to to establish more experience. So it's a it's a pretty robust test plan. And then I think a, a little fun thing I picked up from Proterra is just the the strength of the battery packs themselves. You know, you want a strong battery pack. And they told us and we, we've looked at data from one test they do. They've got a thick ballistic like case protecting their battery packs from the elements. And one test they've had to do in their transit business is a manhole test because if you draw, drive a transit bus around New York City from time to time, you can lose a manhole cap and shoots up to the bottom of the vehicle. So 
Uh, we've examined their data, how they shoot a manhole cover into their battery packs and how that ballistic grade material absorbs that impact and keeps the batteries safe. And then they've also got technology that we've tested in our vehicle too that, that keeps each individual cell safe. And there's hundreds, thousands of individual cells on our vehicle. So it's important that there's a good safety strategy within the battery pack as well. So looking towards the future, are you already eyeing new innovations for Julie? Is there anything that you are currently working on that you'd like to share with us today? There's specific features. I'm going to let Mark talk about that. And, and then there's, there's technology too. I'll, I'll handle that. My, my integrity and compliance and, and fair trade training has taught me that I cannot give you in a podcast, Tom, our path to market of innovation. But it's there. It's it's evolving. There's there's different things that include voltage and batteries and powertrains and drivetrains and charging stations. That's that's all on the roadmap. It will continue to be on the roadmap. Uh, we can't disclose exactly where we're going to land it, but we continue to invest millions of dollars to advance what we're offering today and make it even better for the future. And then Mark can talk a little bit about some of the specific product features. Yeah, so so some of those features that we we have currently in our C2 product today, we've we brought those over into the Julie product and and uh, that's part of the overall strategy is to bring as much commonality in terms of uh, you know, those type of safety features to as what we have today in our current product on C2 Julie and into the in the C2 and then to the Julie side. So when you look at some of those features, you know, Tom, I just you know, share some of those really cool features that 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 are all available on the Julie. And I'll start off with one of the foremost is around our star seating system. So we have a star seating system that was really designed to to help with, um, you know, uh, configurations of seats in the in the bus and to allow customers to move seats in and out, particularly on special needs vehicles. And to do that in a way that was it reduced labor. And what we did is we the seating allows them to do that with inside the bus. So a technician doesn't have to go underneath the bus to unbolt a seat um, and then take that seat out and move it around. Star seating, one of the things that we did is we quickly uh, thought of this as a safety feature for the Julie. And we put that as standard on all of our Julie products. This really allows our customers, technicians to, to work on seats from time to time as they need to inside the bus. They can take a seat out, they can repair it, they can replace it. They don't have to go underneath the bus and, and get involved with components underneath it. Some of the other technology safety features that we have is, is we have our PV360, which, uh, which is a 360 degree view of the bus uh, for the driver sitting in the driver's cockpit. They can see all around that bus, much like the cameras that you have maybe in your car today, if you have a car that has that 360 or backup cameras, we certainly have those features on Julie. Um, we're exploring newer technologies like our pedestrian warning system, which really is kind of an interface for the driver that's a, it's a kind of a radar that goes around the, uh, the high, um, uh, high zones around the school bus, the front, the side, the curbside, and the rear. That's another feature that we've introduced. And then, you know, some other things like our auto reversing door, or just to mention a few of those things that we bring to the Julie, not just on the EV side, but on those safety features that we really want to, um, to elevate and have our industry begin to, to adopt those type of safety features. Uh, Cause you know, we, we really do you know, when we get in our office every day and we look at our emails, we, we really don't want to see those emails that come in around some sort of a accident involving a school bus. It really breaks our heart. And we're trying to figure out, you know, what technology can we bring to the to the, our product that can prevent prevent one of those emails or one of those news stories uh, that that sometimes happens. And we really try to look at those type of technologies and, and do our very best to bring those to the marketplace uh, for our customers. Um, 
So, you know, kind of moving back towards the the EV side on on the on the on the product, you know, some of the features around the EV is, you know, we have a uh, bi-directional product, so that our product can discharge. Uh, and we've we've talked before, or maybe some of this around the vehicle to grid that's out there, that the vehicle to grid component is a question in the marketplace. And so our product is able to handle the vehicle to grid. Um, uh, you know, potential that's in the marketplace for the school bus. There's lots of new technologies like that. And as Kaylee said, you know, we've got other things in our, in our, our backlog that we're looking at to, to see is, does it make sense for our school bus? And can we do that and make it commercially viable for our customers uh, in the school bus market? Does that kind of get to your question there, Tom, I, hopefully? Oh, it definitely does. And I appreciate it, Mark. Very thorough. And that really is the last question in our podcast. But I want to turn it back to both of you if you have anything more to add. Yeah, Tom, you uh, you get to ask all the questions in these podcasts. I figure it'd be fun if I could fire one back and at you. Um, Mark missed something in, in the innovation question. And I think it's something that, that we forget a little bit. The fundamental thing about the EV school bus the biggest innovation there is that we've been able to bring to it. Daimler, Thomas built buses breaking through. We eliminated the tailpipe. And I think we lose sight of that. That's the biggest innovation. It's there now. It'll be there in the future. There's no tailpipe. And, and I, I'm just so proud of my coworkers and, and the bridge for the future they're doing and transporting children and offering an opportunity to do it with absolutely zero emissions, no tailpipe. So Tom, question for you. If we were to take all of the greenhouse gases produced by an internal combustion engine, just an average school bus, and we were to shove it into a school bus, so you take all the gases that come out of that tailpipe that we've eliminated, how many school buses would that gas fill in one year of operation? Keely, I'm thinking the answer to that is 50. Yeah, not, not a bad guess. That's a lot. That's a lot of volume of air. You know, you, I got my school bus in front of me. Like, how much air can you shove in that thing? Of course, this is a little model, but in all actuality, uh, we are eliminating 300 school buses of of gas per year per operation compared to internal combustion engine to diesel. The, the gas, the greenhouse gas that comes out of tailpipe is equivalent to the volume that would you would shove in 300 school buses. So I think the best innovation is eliminating the tailpipe. And now I know why that I asked the questions and not answer the questions. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. Guys, thank you so much for your participation today. And we look forward to the next Thomas Talks podcast.